Well, I'd feel like a scab getting a half body, but Deluxe is a bit of a rip. Hello? Hello? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't see you so tiny on my account, a very small boy. What are you like? Yeah, it's just after a massage. Oh, okay, yeah, you get Deluxe. You want Deluxe? I give you Deluxe. Deluxe is very good, you know, I give you traditional Deluxe Hawaiian massage for my homeland. Is that what Hawaiian accents sound like? You can go away. Uh, yeah, just the basic. You know one, Delas? Nah, j just, just the basic. Yeah. Okay. Room number three, now. Is he wearing African clothes? I say now! Take off your clothes, I go wash my hands. Fuck. He's pissed off about the basic massage. Wait, do I leave my undies on? What do I do? Shit, I better take them off. What are you doing? No, 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 leave your underpants on. You're not happy ending, right down. Basic oil for you. What the hell is he using? It smells like rotting corpse. Uh, I've got a phone call. Hello, yeah. Let for a little massage. Let massage like I'm gonna go on a year, get yourself from, uh, from my, from my, I want a uh, basic. I feel like I'm a little deluxe, I have my, yeah, basic. Hello? Hello? What's the music for? Yeah? Yeah, what's the music for? Hey, too hot? Um, you want harder? Yeah, I'll give you hot, it's okay. Oh, look at your tattoo. Very nice. Elephant, huh? Yeah, don't fire. I'm gonna find a tattoo of elephant. Hehehehe! I hear you. I'm gonna 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 hear you. Yeah. You want harder? Uh, yeah, I'll give you harder. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Hang on, I just, uh, I have to take phone call, phone call okay? Yeah. Mmm. 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 Yeah. Mmm. Hmm.
I guess we'll just pick up where we left off. We were just discussing your failed attempt joining Spinal Tap in 1992. Yeah, in 92, uh, Spinal Tap came to Melbourne and did. A, we're trying out a new drummer, and I was I'd waited all all week to play, and I was third in line and uh, ready to go. And then Daryl Summers <laughs> stole my thunder. <laughs> Do you think that's a bit? I think that's pretty weak of Daryl. <laughs> Apparently, he was a good drummer. I don't. He was pretty good. I was believe good. that. But he was always all right. He was okay. I only ever saw him mime on Hey Hey It's Saturday. No, he was Stevie actually Wonder. he was he's a, he was actually good, but he just kept smiling and twirling sticks. Yeah, I'm being an idiot. So, <laughs> I mean, usually I don't care that much about where a band started and all that stuff, but with you guys, it's actually pretty interesting because you're kind of like an institution these days, um, or have been for a long time. I mean, even when I first knew you, which is like over ten years ago now, it was like you'd been around forever. Is that yeah. true? Oh. How long has it actually been now? 99's been a band since 1997. But before that, I've played in bands with Ian and Cameron at least... So long. Seven, <laughs> seven, seven <laughs> years before that. A really since long the time. late 80s. Really. Yeah, so. It doesn't seem like any of you are old enough to have done all that. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, we are. We are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Three true. of us are about Three of us are, and one of us isn't. <laughs> Wait, guess which one that is. But um, I, the one but, inside. And, and also, I, <laughs> this, 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 but being from Perth, we, we're used to whittling. Whittling's a bit of a um, a bit of an occupational sport. Like we're we're quite big fans if you play a gig and there's say very few people and you start playing and they, they leave <laughs> and, and perhaps all that's left say sometimes you're on tour maybe it's just a couple of dogs <laughs> and the sound engineer the sound engineer a few arm folding that's always a good feeling you know and then the sound engineer comes up afterwards and says interesting <laughs> doing some drawing with my friends. Would you like to join us? What are you drawing, Jane? Uh, this is a picture of my dog. Um, I fed him some fiberglass, and the, but then it made his stomach itchy, so now he's scratching out with his teeth. Oh, such a pretty dog, Jane. What are you drawing, Timmy? This is a picture of my dad. He took me to the park and Painted it red. Oh yes! I think I remember seeing that on the news. Your dad sure sounds like a hoot. I love drawing. Don't you? Why not? In 1989, my fabulous band, The Hard Ons, toured with a band called Poison Idea from Portland, Oregon. They were an incredible band. Um, I ended up staying after the gig with the drummer. And anyway, he turned out the lights. I'm in bed with him and I can hear him taking his clothes off. So I'm thinking, well, I guess I should take my clothes off too to be comfortable. So we're both in bed together in the nude. And um, well, I thought he was going to be quite hygienic, but I got crabs off him. There, were, there was no sex involved. I mean, I just slept next to him. But somehow, the, the, the insects on his body migrated before Tony Abbott could stop them. <laughs> and um, they obviously went, you know, south of the navel. And the pubis area became raw red from my constant itching with my fingernails digging in, trying to get these fucking crabs out. I went to the chemist. I told the lady behind the counter, I had crabs. What can I do? And she said, well, you can choose sex partners more wisely. I said, well, just do your fucking job. So she gave me some topical ointment. I took that, didn't work. Went to another chemist and they offered me something that was uh, oral. 
to take, I mean, you know, to get rid of the crabs, but I had to get a script from a doctor first. And I went to the doctor and he said, well, you can start choosing sex partners more wisely. I said, I didn't even have sex with this man. He's not my type. And anyway, he gave me a script for these pills that did nothing, the crab stayed. And finally, my friend Paul, who knew how to breathe fire and everything, he was a guy that I looked up to. Uh, he said, the only thing that will get rid of these crabs is fire. So I wrapped my salami in in aluminium foil and I set fire to my pubic hair and um, I saw all these little crabs flying off in all different directions like kangaroos avoiding a bushfire and uh, I, I got rid of them. Mind you, um, it was very, very, very painful. Hi kids! I'm Maggie and I love you! <laughs> Do you love me? Right me! <laughs> Have you guessed what today's theme is? It's love. And I'm going to tell you what love is. First, the bear sits at a distance from the dolly, trying to decide if she's suitable for love. Meanwhile, Dolly notices the bear and wonders if he is a nice bear or a creepy bear. After a while, Bear decides to approach the dolly and pretends to be very nice. Eventually they drink enough juice so they both go home together and cuddle. The bear enjoyed cuddling the dolly so much that he decided to give her a surprise from behind. After that the dolly didn't want to cuddle anymore. The next morning the bear stays for breakfast insisting that he cook eggs, even though the dolly has very clearly stated that she has things to do and that she's not hungry. Eventually the bear leaves after getting Dolly's number and texts her an hour later saying what a great night he had, X, X, X. Dolly doesn't respond. The next day, the bear tried calling the dolly. She didn't pick up. Then he called again and left a voicemail saying that there was a surprise for her out the front and the next morning I went outside and there was a poo on my doormat and that's what love is, kids! Bye! Say hello, chatter. Ah. Hi, kids! Today I want to talk to you about inner beauty. Now we all know that everyone is beautiful on the outside in their own way. So than others of course but did you know that what really matters is how beautiful you are on the inside so how can I be more beautiful on the inside well I know that I have a very beautiful face so I'm going to fry it up and gobble it now and then my yucky guts will be all covered in my beautiful face <laughs> Beautiful like my face, just like my face. I love my face, you love my face, we love my face, let's eat my face. Fry it up, fry it up, till it's not quite crispy. Sauce it up, lift it up, eat it with me, my face. Oh my face, don't you love the taste of my face? Continuing on from meals you can make when you're feeling really lazy um something that i do that yeah another meal that i make for myself a lot when i feel like something healthy but i can't be bothered is i just literally put a sweet potato in the oven on the rack So 
I literally just go, hey, sweet potato. Some, I, if I'm that lazy, I don't even like wash it. Like, I'm just, it doesn't matter, literally. So I just put this in the oven on the rack. Whoa, did it roll? No, it stayed. Um, oh, I don't have a handle on my oven, as you can see, so it's a bit awkward sometimes. Um, so I just put that up, that potato in there whole. Don't do anything to it. I mean, some people would like fork it, put holes in it. No, it doesn't matter. It cooks fine. So just chuck it in there. And then after about an hour, at about, I don't know, moderate oven, it's just delicious, nice and kind of nice skin and very soft. I heard my dog just sigh with boredom at me. Maybe I'm taking it personally. So today I've just put leaves, some avo that's been lying around, some goat cheese, to some tomatoes, and just some little pepitas on top there that are just full of zinc and all this other cool stuff. You can just buy a packet of salad from Safeway. You know how they have those pre-made salads with the weird crunchy noodles? Just chuck that on there. Oh, it doesn't matter. So it's just as easy as putting a potato in the oven, putting it on a plate and chucking something on it and you just got yourself a nice dinner. I moved to Melbourne when I was about 17 and after a year and a half I started doing a few short jewellery courses. The first day of the first jewellery course I knew that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I met my taxidermy mentor at the same time and started learning taxidermy as well. Um, my taxidermy teacher, Rudy, was he was just a retired taxidermist that I met for, through a friend and he offered to teach me. I'd been wanting to learn since I was about 16 and I couldn't find anyone so it was very informal, it was just like a mentorship. So I'd just go out to his house if I found something dead on the road and he'd just take me through the process so he'd do one half and I'd do the other half and we'd kind of go from there. I'm a vegan, so I only use animals that have died of natural causes, so mainly small birds and mice. And I was studying jewellery at the same time, so I'd preserve a mouse, and then it was just kind of like a natural progression for me to put diamonds in its eyes and give it a silver tail and put a brooch back on it. So straight away, like within the first few weeks of making jewellery, I started combining the two things together. And then I think in about 2007, I had a show at Craft Victoria, and that's when I kind of flipped it around and I started making taxidermy sculptures and adding jewellery components. Yeah, it was quite liberating because I'd always made jewellery and everything had to be considered to be, you know, durable enough to be worn. And when I started making sculptures, I realised I could actually create to my full potential. I'm quite inspired by the Victorian era and the Victorians were very big into mourning, it was quite fashionable, so when a loved one died they would take a lock of hair and they would turn it into a piece of jewellery or they would have, you know, lockets with photos and they liked to carry reminders around with them and I really like that, that sentimentality. I get people coming to me wanting me to do stuff with ashes of deceased loved ones, um, hair, occasionally, you know, people come with their children's teeth. They all kind of, you know, in my eyes it's, it can be done in a memorial sense but also in a kind of amuletic or talismanic way as well, I guess, when they're, you know, using children's teeth and that sort of thing, when it's, it's not about them dying but it's symbolising a phase of their life that's over. The main reason behind my work comes from an ethical animal rights viewpoint so I want I don't necessarily want to turn my viewers into vegans but I want to help them to make the decisions they would make if they were fully educated so I believe you know a lot of the meat and dairy industry the practices that, that go on are so horrific but they go on behind closed doors and there's a reason for that because if we knew what went on we wouldn't partake in it. And so I just want to highlight what actually does go on because I think a lot of people would, would vote differently with their dollar.
let's hope this one works out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is new to me. Um, is the song about cupcakes? No, it's about a person called Cupcake. That's their real name? Um, in my imagination it is. Oh, okay. It's not a person that you know. Well, it's about a person that I know, but in the song his, my pet name for him is Cupcake. But uh, I never called him Cupcake in my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's the sort of thing you it's usually do a bit license. ironically. Yeah. yeah. I do sweet pea sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But Cupcake's really delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed there's a lot of photos of you getting around where you're always doing the slow motion windmill. Yeah. What's going on there? Why does everyone take the photo at that point? Um, it's probably the only point. Or do you I'm just do it a lot? It. I do it a lot because I'm usually using one or both hands. So there's, you know, if you if you have a free hand, you, I feel like you should do something with it. Yeah. So it's not the Put it in the air. Are you like an advocate for <laughs> renewable energy and wind, en wind energy and things like that? Or is it a different thing? <laughs> it's kind of related. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Secret political Good. message. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a series of um, photographs. People great. get confused. Sound engineers, you've got to kind of let them know you're not asking for more fold back. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I also wanted to ask you guys something that really has always intrigued me that never gets talked about enough. I've always wanted to know what shitty jobs you guys have all had to do. Well, um, hospitality. Yeah, yeah, there's been lots of hospo. Everyone's done that. Have you, you ever had a shitty coffees? job, James? Yeah, I used to be a, um, a checkout chick. Wow. Yeah. Which Leo's Fine Food and Wine. Oh, uh, yeah. upmarket. Yeah, 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 yeah. They end the night with that. Um, what's that? It's amore. That's amore. Every night. Wow. Yeah, yeah oh, it makes me wow. spin her. I've done everything. Um, I've been a chiropractic assistant and an uh, English exam invigilator. It <laughs> means you um, you monitor people's sitting exams and try and suss out if they're cheating or not. Do you have uh, a rule line you go <laughs> from the much. desk? Yeah. How do you get that job? I've been wanting to do that <laughs> for ages. I can give you some, I'll give you some links. Never Maybe correct. not right now, because it's no. probably <laughs> inappropriate. Yeah. So we got to wrap this up. So. Oh, yeah. Ah. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for that. Was I supposed to interview you and ask you about I don't stuff? think so, okay, no. Good. Yeah. You good though? I am okay. <laughs> good. Yeah. One, two, 